tend to uh, have uniforms and have titles and have hierarchies and have politic and run by a politic within the art world. But uh, I think that's largely a fallacy in the end. I think it's it's the art world is just it's basically I I like to look at my work as something that engages with people and with history. And uh, you don't have to be part of the art world to, to engage with it. Um, I don't come from the art world. Uh, what I mean by that is in the sense there was no one in my family or immediate vicinity of myself till I entered the academic world of making of learning about art that had any idea of what the art, what we now understand, what I understand now, or what we're talking about as the art world. Uh, I move in and out of the art world constantly. So for me, I'm making art for as much for uh, the people uh, that are in this reified world of the art world as to my nieces and nephews and, 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 and family and, and parents and grandparents and uh, who are no notion of it at all. Most of the time I'm really working in very specific mediums and disciplines, i.e. drawing, print, sculpture, installation, performance, and uh, within each one I, I, I have 35 years of history in each, in each one of these areas, so um, my activities vary from, from day to day. I guess maybe the, 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 the strongest relationships I would have would be to drawing and to the notion of the performative or that which is related to events or actions. And um, those are probably the, uh, the two activities that have been sustained for the longest period of time. A print has been something that came out of the performance work and uh, sculpture, same thing. I began to make objects and sculptures in relationships to events and actions that I would do. And installations were often the outcome of performances or events that I would stage. So what I think is really generating most of the work visually is either drawing or performative actions. Certain ideas are, are persistent throughout the uh, career and practice over the years, and there are these reoccurring themes, not even themes, they're reoccurring concepts that are there that are related to the notion of, uh, of um, intention, control, um, the body, how the body interacts, the social body, the political body, the, 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 the personal sexualized body, all these things are, are about the body, and that's really a central part of the work. Um, but I also think there's a real, as far as I'm concerned, commitment to a material practice of a studio-based activity. So I, I am in the studio working on these things and I do consider the street or the performative space outside of the studio as a kind of extended place to work. And I don't really create that division between an exhibition space and a working space. And, a, and neither do I in a teaching space or an exhibition space. I sort of move in and out of these spaces and contexts and, 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 and see the work developing. The Home Wall Drawing Project was a, a project done in 2004. And again, um, it was a sabbatical year. I was off for a year, so I went to Paris and I, I got the Paris studio and I was living in the at la Cité Internationale des Arts. And uh, the tools I brought with me were my rubber stamps. I worked with rubber stamps. Uh, I must have close to 70, 80 rubber stamps uh, that, are, that have been made over a period of close to 15 years, maybe 20 years. And um, these rubber stamps have been used in the past to make discrete drawings on paper. So I'm stamping and drawing on paper. Books. Uh, and textiles, where I'm stamping onto textiles, and ultimately stamping on walls, so doing large wall drawings using repeated rubber stamping. In bookstores and in art galleries and in different mail and through mail, and offered my services saying that I would do a home wall drawing in your home in exchange for a meal, your favorite meal. So what people ended up doing was finding out about this information through either word of mouth or through the flyer or through a reputation that was growing. 
and they would uh, solicit me. I would go to a first meeting. We would look at the apartment. We would discuss the nature of my work. Mm -hmm. And then uh, we would find in the house a place for, for an adequate wall drawing. It might have been... The, and they went from being very intimate in size, like the size of a plate, uh, 12 inch diameter, to a life-size horse coming down a stairwell uh, in, in a steps. Or, so the investment was different. Sometimes they took about an hour to make, and sometimes they took two days or three days to make. And uh, once we had decided in that first meeting where the image would be, what the image would be, and I would really negotiate it with the person. In other words, the person would tell me, well, I saw your work and I really don't want any bugs and no hypodermics and no, no insects and no, and no vermin and no, no, you know, and that's okay. And, and I really like red and blue and I like, like, could you make it in red and blue? And I, and I didn't have no problem with that because basically I was in, I put myself in the situation of, of uh, basically in command in the sense of someone was, was, was asking me to, to make a work for them. It was a commission in a way. And uh, once we had established it, we'd establish a date, and they'd say, okay, on this week, uh, this weekend, on that day, uh, come. And I would arrive two or three hours before, and I would begin working with my stamps and my stenciling, and I would begin stamping. And uh, they would have also arranged the menu, and they would have asked me what I wanted to eat, and if I ate certain things and didn't eat other things. And sometimes they would have invited uh, friends and uh, family. We would have a great meal. And at the end of the night, I would go back home with my suitcase of rubber stamps and the day would be over. Or if it was in a smaller town or it was uh, away from where I was living in Paris or in Limoges, um, I would sleep over. The next morning, I would continue the work. And usually it would be two days, no more than that. I would finish and leave and leave the next day. The project is now seven years old, I mean six, yeah, seven years old. So what's happened since is actually quite interesting because uh, a number of these places people were renting or they owned them and they had to leave their house and they didn't know what to do with the thing and they, they emailed me or called me and uh, wondered what, what should they do. And uh, in the end I just would tell them that uh, it was up to them. If they wanted to paint it over, that was fine. That was the only rule. I wouldn't do it on any surface that could be taken off and carried away so it was not on... Wallpaper, it wasn't on textiles, it, wasn't, it had to be part of the architecture. I had hoped, and I still hope, that people who look at it and are intrigued by um, the incongruity of this moon, of this white dot, being, uh, not being able to recognize it as a, an immediate country, a, a flag of a specific place, seeing it repeated in different sizes then noticing that it's tattered, that it has holes, that it has marks on it, and then noticing that there's actually footprints on it. These would lead people to question what it is and that the wearing would look like craters of the moon, like the marks on the moon, and that these craters would be in the end sort of like in, created by the footprints. And you would go and look at the labels and then you would realize, oh, there have been like six or seven cities in this, in this, in this walk. And, so he had some in Montreal and some in New York and some in, in Trieste and some in Udine and some in, in Cape Breton. And then they would piece this idea of a, of a duration piece that's being done over a long period of time. The moonwalks were away from me in 2010 uh, of, of going back to a piece from 1974, and which when I did it in 74 was called Earth Walk. And I was walking with canvases on my feet. And at that point, it was really process-driven work where I was looking at ways of marking or, 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 or wearing uh, and of, trans, of transcribing um, the environment around me, my day-to-day -day activities around me. So um, the idea of walking with canvases and wearing them down then was a way of objectively, without an interpretation of the hand, uh, marking these. So yeah, in Moonwalk, I would say that it continues to be that idea of mark making only this time rather than with an intentional hand in terms of a kind of skill-based activity it really is this notion of your feet touching the ground and wearing it out but i also like it as a kind of a a crazy idea of the moon and the earth touching each other and walking together with the with the, with the kind of friction that's there different cities different reactions different places different uh, interpretations 
um, cities where I didn't understand what people were saying. For instance, in Trieste, I don't speak Italian, and people were looking at me oddly, and sometimes they would ask me in Italian, I hope it's not too bad, because they were seeing it as injury, and they would see my leg as being wrapped and be seeing a kind of infirmity, and I, I would just say, no, it's it's fine, it's, it's not really hurting, and it's really uh, an art piece, an artwork, and I would try and explain it to them that way. Um, Manhattan, I did four moonwalks in Manhattan, and there there were all sorts of different conversations or, or uh, reactions from people avoiding me, avoiding eye contact, looking the other way, crossing the street. I mean, it's pretty innocuous as a kind of action. It's not really provocative that much. To people asking me, well, what's wrong with you? And well, how are you? And what are you doing? And getting involved in a kind of conversation of what it was about. So reactions are very different. And the moon and the earth rubbing and talking to each other is part of the poetics of, 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 of what I, I feel that my work is about, in the sense is a kind of uh, the notion of, of a kind of lyricism and a kind of a mixture of the mundane and the uh, gritty and dirtiness of a street and the grime of rubbing it to the the most impossible kind of dream-like quality of walking on the moon or the imagination. I don't know, it's a hard one to say what makes it contemporary, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, and, and the more I make it and the longer I'm making it, the less easy is it for me to explain that. Um, this Trianal was supposed to be characterized by youthfulness, by emerging artists, by uh, the art of Montreal or Quebec now. And when I read about it, and I read that I'm the senior artist of the exhibition, it just brings a smile to my face in the end, because it's like, it doesn't make me any younger, any older, it just shows how relative the whole thing is. <laughs>